Okay guys, uh, this is uh, part two of uh, converting a long shaft into a short shaft. This is a Yamaha 25D 1986 I think, maybe even before. Uh, this is my beloved outboard, there's a reason why I'm doing this. Uh, this has sentimental value to me and I've had lots of adventures on her and she's just a powerful beast. It's like having a motocross bike on the back of your boat. Anyway, that being said, I'm just going to show you what it what it takes to be a backstreet New Delhi, Mom, Mom, Mumbai, Mumbai, Bombay, uh, backstreet CNC type, engineer type, something or other. So this is I'm so to get my power. Obviously, I've got a, a battery. I've got I'm using my scooter in conjunction with solar on the roof. So now I've told you that I'm going to turn the scooter off. Um, the most difficult part of this. By the way, I'll just show you the shaft. I'm holding the phone, so it's a little bit annoying. Uh, this is a stainless steel tube that's been cut, and this has been and this has been cut. It's five inches, 125 mil. Um, right, I really wanted to sh take this off and show you what I've done, but oh, here you go. So that was the most critical. Oh, that was where am I? Oh, yeah. That was the most critical cut, uh, but I. I, I overcut by about one millimeter to give me some dr dressing room because I want this end of this to butt butt up exactly with this just to give it some extra stability even though it's absolutely rock solid tight tight in there I can't even get that off uh, well I could but I don't want to so that is about halfway there that's that's the stub that's this is the part that goes into the outboard anyone who's watching this probably knows about outboards so will know what I'm talking about this goes onto here and as usual because it's starting to cool down it's getting tight okay so now now that my friends I hope this is clear I the light we're losing the light here a bit that my friends is the short shaft now okay this is the bit that goes into the gearbox that goes into the power head so I'll put this down okay so that was what I wanted to achieve put this down very carefully bit it's not bent it's not warped and in order to do that in order to achieve that I went through very slowly and I used a combination of two stroke oil because that's all I've got I was using pig fat and then I realized I, I forgot I had this and my uh, clean my kitchen up bottle it's just got like bleach and washing up liquid because the most important thing is is you want to chase the heat up to the end of the shaft because the heat does get intense if you don't do it properly and it will it will warp your shaft okay uh, by what degree I don't know okay I've never done this before but I know it gets bloody hot so this was my test this is a piece of aluminium tube this was how I set up the jig okay this is oh look there's the off there's the off cut there there's the off cut of the the shaft that's how much I cut off okay so that's 125 mil nice weighty bit of stainless steel there and as you can see, as you can see, it's not blue. So it has. So I, I, I maintained the, the the temperature by keeping it cool. Okay. Different story on the tube. It went really blue. I overheated it. You know, I learned my lesson from that. Anyway. So basically, what I've got is to set it up is a file. Okay. You may not need all this stuff. This is Backstreet New Delhi uh, CNC engineering. Okay. This is the kind of stuff you have to do. This. Oh, this is my scooter this is what my scooter lives on I've turned it into a, a workshop bench if you like a power tool bench so I have all my pillar drill on here I have my router my router fits in here my jigsaw fits in here upside down and my disc my disc cutter fits in here and there's also I've got a wood blade for this as well vernier essential absolutely essential 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 unless you're comfortable and you've got tolerances a marker uh, I've done the lubricant uh, right now why is this like this you're wondering maybe by the way this this bolt here is holds us the angle grinder on underneath okay so you can get that underneath there okay. flying blind here okay this this is beautifully square I did this on my chop saw okay I know that this is square even though it's wood it's square okay I've got about one or two mil tolerances to play with anyway so what was happening I did my first cut and it just came out completely at an angle and I just I went I got so pissed off I went I had to put it all down I went for a ride on my bike 
and for 26 miles I was thinking why is that cut so bad when everything is so true and what actually I discovered I, I left it and we, I woke up this morning with a fresh head and a bowl of porridge and I came out and I, I started messing around with squares and having a look at the angles and what it is is the actual casting on the disc cutter puts the blade at an angle it puts the blade and this is exaggerating at an angle like that so I, I saw it with a fresh head and a bright sun and I thought right well that's a problem because now I've got a machine my angle grinder to get this uh, right angle to the to the bed so what I did was I, I messed around and I just I can't bother to explain everything I did I just messed around uh, macro micro engineering just did what I did to make it come 90 degrees off the bed and then what I discovered was I got that bit right and it was, I thought great but then what I found was near the end of the cut on my test piece um, it was starting to, to drift so clearly the, the blade these are only one millimetre thick the blade was bending so what I had to do to rectify that was um, Heath Robinson I just got just what I have always what I've got I just supported the blade at the back just behind the widest point of the cut and put them so they're just touching the blade so that the blade will burn its own it will burn itself into the wood so that will that will contribute to this blade being held solid so it can't wander it, it's got no it's got no play in it you know I could pull it over if I want but it's got compared to what it was it was like almost so you could just do that and it would go over so they, these bits here self-explanatory are holding it in and then I discovered by pouring oil on here as I'm cutting I could flick it I could flick it onto the blade yeah, it's just a side issue there side note so um, this is how I turned my long shaft shaft into a short shaft shaft let's not tread on it eh I'm th thinking about renewing this bearing as well but for a minute I just want to get the engine together so oh oh yeah right right okay yeah people are always saying well what are you just gonna leave it like that no of course not I've got some roll pins I might get an engineer to do this because my pillar drill is a bit of a cheap and nasty and the chuck doesn't sit solid into the drill and it wanders and it's a real mission to make it drill straight and believe me I've drilled a lot of bars with it. And it, it you do get quite good at it but it's just a pain in the ass okay so I'm gonna have I probably I, I was gonna have one and two but I think I'll have one going through there one going through there the same at the bottom to balance it out and uh, they're roll pins so you bang them in and they compress and then you just sort of touch up the ends you know make them nice and smooth and that should that should do it so uh, yeah okay guys well for somebody out there that maybe in, in the future wants to turn their long shaft into a short shaft this isn't the end by the way <laughs> this is, by the way this isn't the end this is a big this is a big issue over with so keep keep stay tuned if, you, if you're interested and I'll show you how I start to do the gear linkage and other various bits and pieces to get it to become a short shaft and then the last video would be me out me out jumping waves on the water spearfishing okay see ya Jesus loves ya bye